And we're back after episode 6, 17. 17, we're f- back with Faster 4, where we go faster than ever. Fast as hell. So yeah. why don't you start with the first story here, Lewis? Yeah, okay. So Spotify told investors that audiobooks will be the next vertical. So, um, so Spotify is thinking that they're going to go into audiobooks. Um, they said that they dominated podcasts. Um, mm. Just like they dominated podcasts, they're looking to go into audiobook domination as well. Now, I'm a little bit skeptical of this because a um, audiobooks are clearly like really expensive to produce as well as the way that Audible is doing it right now. You get one free credit a month per subscription. Yep. I don't know if they're just going to copy that or they're just going to maybe up, maybe kind of like make your um, Spotify a little bit more expensive. Um, sorry. Audiobooks are coming to Spotify. You can listen to books on Spotify. So, uh, but because of that, I'm not entirely sure how they're doing. Right now, I think that their podcasts are still half baked into the platform. I'm not. I'm still not a fan of listening to podcasts. That's on. how I listen to them on Spotify. I do too. I don't use a podcast platform. I think, I think this is gonna win mostly because it's all the audio in one place. And I think when I want to listen to music or listen to podcasts, or listen to an audio book. Having one app do all those things is important because I can pick up, let's say I want to switch from a podcast to an audiobook or I want to switch from an audiobook to music. Being able to do that in the same app and pick up where I left off is important. Um, I, I agree. Hate audio, I hate using Audible. I, but I hate, pod, I hate listening to podcasts. But you do though. On Spotify. I know. I just like. It can be improved, but you're doing it. Is what I, I'm that is true. I just, I really want them to improve it because I don't know, like, how do you feel right now about it? You know, it's, I'm not, I'm not super against it. Um, I don't know what they would do. I don't know how I, I would say they would improve it. I definitely think there's a bit of a priority towards music. For but sure. Th- but if you go to podcasts and shows in your library, yeah, it's your podcast and shows there. It's, it's just like it, it goes there. The, it just shows the new episodes. So there's a new episodes tab, which is fine. But like that whole recommendation system that makes the music just like so incredible that makes Spotify even worth it is not there for podcasts. I'm never getting recommended new podcasts. The charts are always the same. It just seems like they took Apple's whole entire podcast app and were like, how can we like half-ass put this into Spotify? I don't know. I don't know. Here's what I'm, here's what I'm thinking. I think the majority of people still use Spotify for music. And if I look at my homepage, I can see, um, you know, your shows, which by the way, I just listened to these shows. That's why they're on here. I didn't ever like make them my shows. Um, and they're there. And then below that, it's like pop recently played. I think what would happen if they if they made it more discovery, it would take up more real estate. And the problem is a song takes up a real estate on your screen, but they can t- if you listen to it, it takes three minutes, and then you can decide if it's good or bad. And they use that volume of information to make good recommendations. My Spotify recommendations are insane. Like yeah. they could just make a playlist for me, and I will love it. Yeah. To do that with podcasts would be much harder. So I think they want more intent based, where I'm going and I'm seeking out a podcast, and then I'm saving it rather than trying to make suggestions. Because I think it's harder to How do. How often do you listen to podcasts? Uh, every day. You listen to pod. How often do you like? How many shows do you listen to right now? You listen to all in fast forward podcast. My first hopefully. million. My um, first million. And then I, I also I mostly listen to podcasts where the guests are on them. And I yeah. listen to th- and I follow the guests. So, for example, this is the Ryan Pinita show I was listening to. This is a digital agency podcast I listen to. Joe Rogan. Because I listen Canada's to like podcast impulsive. I listen Patrick to like ben ten David. different ones, and like I, like I, I always want to be recommended new shows, similar to like how YouTube or even Netflix, like Netflix and YouTube are great examples of this mm-hmm. because they're constantly recommending you new stuff all the time, and even though they might not be interesting. That's that's okay. Like I find that it'd be interesting once they bring in the audiobooks. Now there's three separate platforms, or even if you took music and then you separated it in the same within the same app, like audiobooks and podcasts. It's a different mode. As a different app, mode, rather than making them meshed. I agree. Oh, for and then have t- the homepage where it has because you're right. I do like that. Like your shows. Then there's like the music because then I could like maybe like scroll through the whole thing and be like, you know what? I could in. do a podcast, right? Yeah, I I agree. For a long time, I literally only listened to Joe Rogan. Yeah, and it's because it, I didn't feel like trying to discover new podcasts, and it, that wasn't a good system to sh- suggest them to me. 
And then I started watching them on YouTube, and YouTube has great suggestion built in. Yeah. So I, I so found bad. you know Impulsive. I found my uh, my first million from Storm. Um, but once I listened to one video that he made me watch, YouTube started recommending it to me yeah. as well. So in regards to what you were saying, Lewis, about the cost, um, I, what if they just made it so that you could just ch- you just could buy them, and then Spotify would charge your like Apple, like just oh, but that's just ex- that's just expensive though. Well, you're, Amazon's just charging me 15 bucks a month right now for it. Yeah, but what I mean is, like, what are they going to do to, like, because here's the thing, too, is that for people who are on Audible right now, like, you keep all your books that are on there. Like, if you if I use the credit up, I'm still getting the book, and I can, like, read it at any point. Now on Spotify, like, I can't just transfer my books over. Do you, do you guys ever feel like, though, like, you paid for a book, and then you only listened to a bit of it, and you didn't like it, or? Yeah, you can get your credit i know you can but like what if spotify lets you publish your book for free and then charges a premium spotify plus that's like an extra 15 bucks a month for audiobooks but it's unlimited and then they actually reward audiobook writers for like similar to how they do their music royalties watch time yeah like how much time people spend listening Mm. to your book rather than do they download it do you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. part of me just wonders how it's going to work like if they do it that way because it's almost like right now you get paid peanuts for doing that right like you get paid peanuts for that royalty yeah. uh, thing yeah but the market might the market just might switch it, it could but i mean they don't have the leverage at the moment audible has the leverage because you get paid way more like you pay, i don't know what the percentage is but i'm assuming if i spent one credit on david goggins new book most of that money will go to him yeah but what here's here's the thing i and this is you know, I'll just make a prediction right now. I think yep. they'll do it. And I think they'll win. Yeah. And the reason is the market market economics to me in the book game seems to be way more people make money on the back end. So they release a book. It builds up their profile. They do tours. They do meet and greets. They do c- consulting. They do masterminds sometimes if they're gurus. They sell TV shows or whatever else. So the book is just kind of a launching pad for their career. So if I'm a book writer as a professional, I want to make – I mean – Obviously, there's other, like, for example, if you write, like, a fictional book or whatever, yeah. right? But in the whole, like, self-help nonfiction space, it actually makes more sense to make my book freely available to everybody and for my book to be optimized for people to, to actually listen to it because they'll all reach more people, and then, then I'll be able to leverage that audience better. So mm-hmm. I think that those people will immediately, like the David Goggins, the people yeah. like that will immediately move to a platform like this, get more um, ears and eyeballs. And then because they have more masses, they'll be able to turn that into money in other ways, kind of like what happened with music. That's when the royalties like went down, they started touring, selling merch, et cetera. But it's kind of like the opposite. And the, well, I mean, I guess that's what you're kind of arguing, but it is at the moment the opposite. Usually, like, the book is the token that you buy to support them, right? Like, yes. if you like Do- David Goggins, you buy his book because th- that, that's what's it like used to be 40 that way bucks. with music, though, too, right? It used to be that way with music where the album was a way to support mm-hmm. them, too. Yeah, but at the same time, Spotify was a response to piracy mm-hmm. versus, like, right now, piracy in audiobooks obviously is a no, thing. I, yeah, it's not as bad, though. You're but, right. Yeah, so... I see. It's just, yeah, right now, like... I, I mean, I, I do agree. I think Spotify will win because they're just Spotify and they're just they're way smarter than me <laughs> with this kind of stuff. But I just really wonder what they're going to do about that. It's just, it, to me, it's going to be they're going to say, hey, you know, people that write books, do you want to go on Spotify? Mm-hmm. This is how much we're going to pay you. And keep in mind, too, the way this works, if they do a subscription edition, is there'll be a new pool of money. So all of us that sign up for the spot, let's say it's the Spotify Plus. Yeah that extra 10 bucks a month is all going to a pool of a very few authors that are on there making money on the audiobooks platform. Mm-hmm. So what's going to happen? You're, you're like, well, there's like no authors on there yet. I'm going to put my book on it. And you're going to keep doing that until the rate yeah. of the royalties goes down. And then at that point, it'll be equilibrium and it'll be balanced yeah. out. And plus, you could probably do it where like the bottom 80% of authors who are writing books, they transition over even like when you're giving their book like a half listen they're getting paid better than they would off of people buying off of audible like spending that one credit mm. because like that one credit is so sacred right so you want to spend it on something like You're from jk rowling or like i don't know who else is famous right phil knight whatever yeah i get you and so if they get more money there there's 80 percent of the people then they start doing the joe rogan's where it's like all right 10 million bucks and here's an audible or here's a spotify original auto audio book Oh yeah, right. And then that's Spotify like, originals. That's how they get that last twenty percent of True. people. But what it's do you probably going to be a good place to onboard people, even onto audiobooks, once they realize it's just a podcast 
kind of, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, there's a bunch of people, like, right now you have to go out of your way to Audible, but like we said, it's always going to be in your same space, yeah. right? And then you have to save it to your device. And you I use the library app right now for any audiobooks, and if it's not on there for free, I'm not buying. So uh, The library book? Is it, wait, on, on it's Audible, called there's a library? It's there's called Libby? Yeah. Yeah, Libby. Through the Sarnia library, like, through our local library. Oh, what we have? There's an app with a bunch of ebooks on there, yeah. And is there a lot of audiobooks? Yeah, like, there? the ones that I've looked up have been on there Sweet. that I've been interested in. Maybe I should oh. try that. That's epic. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe that they've taken podcasts and just put them on paper. That's what they've done. You know what? Well, what you're arguing, people losing maybe their livelihood from um, writing books. And in South Korea, people are losing their livelihood because robots are taking their jobs. What? Yes. Um, so South Korea has 932 industrial bots for every 10,000 workers. That's almost 1%. So almost 1% of the workers in South Korea are robots. And um, that's like the highest number. Singapore has 605. Japan has 390. Germany has 371. Um, U.S. only 255. So surprisingly low automation wow. for the. I mean, we have a lot. They have a lot of people in America. Um, Did you say one percent? Anyway, uh, sorry, South Korea has almost one percent. Is that correct? Am I doing have, math right? One, if they have a thousand. One k to ten k. Wouldn't so, that be? Oh shit! It's uh, that's it's ten. I, I thought it was a hundred thousand. Yeah, that's literally that's ten percent. Yeah. Almost 10%. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> yes, tr- thank you. For wow. No worries. So 10% of workers, so one in 10 workers, one in 10 workers are robots in Korea. That's nuts. And man, that's actually... BTS Army, one second. <laughs> that's actually crazy, actually. Uh, one in 100 sounded high to me, that, which is crazy, which is what maybe why I went to one and didn't do the math correctly. Because one, one in 10, 10 doesn't even make sense. No. But that's I mean, crazy. I wonder. I wonder if that's like um, also taken into consideration, like the self checkouts. That's not a robot. It technically is. I well, guess. I guess you know what? I guess it's automation, right? Yeah. Like if anything, like for example, it's still f- a lot. There's six checks. Still a lot. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. But anyway, company in South Korea called Speefox is, is saying they're 75 percent automated. And they represent South Korea's continued push away from human labor. So South Korea recently made a new rule where if your company, like manufacturing, construction, whatever, if you have like an injury and someone dies or gets badly harmed, the CEO or the you know, high-level managing um, managerial staff wow. can go to jail. Oh, no way. So if somebody like dies on a, on a job site, yeah. the CEO could go to jail. Which I think Damn. is kind of kind of badass. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you're responsible for this company. Somebody died on your watch, so to speak. Throw you in jail. It's huge, huge move for workers' rights. Yeah. But arguably a little bit intense. It's almost like they shot themselves in the foot by accident. They did. Because yeah. what they did was they were like, they just scared the shit out of corporate South Korea. And they're like, all right, well, that's too risky because I like being rich and out of jail. So <laughs> instead of risking going to jail, I'm going to cut my compensation and so are all of our elites, and we're going to just build robots to replace workers. Isn't that just so, like, hilarious, though, in a sense, where it's, like, <laughs> where it's, like, where, like, I'm kind of, like, th- it just makes you think, like, yeah, obviously, there should be repercussions for people dying on your freaking site. Yeah. But, like, who would have known? It's, like, all right, let's just get rid of everyone's jobs. Yeah, I mean, well, they don't <laughs> want to go to jail. And it's, like, kind of scary because – so apparently the rules are pretty vague, too. So the, the rules aren't – aren't clear if somebody dies, like how you're going to be culpable, like how, yeah. you know, how they're going to assign responsibility. So when you leave it really, amb- you know, really vague, you know, that ambiguity is going to scare the shit out of these leaders and they're going to just invest in automation. It, banana, you, banana sales probably went like crazy skyrocketed. So like people are throwing banana peels all over the floor. Trying to make someone slip. <laughs> trying to make someone slip. <laughs> S- sue the, send the CEO to jail. The thing that I took away from this was, holy cow, what are unions going to do when robots become a real bargaining chip at the negotiation table when yeah. when automation becomes it's so accessible to so many different um employers and they go hey listen like for workers rights we want xyz and they go okay we'll go get robots well that's literally like that's even a discussion that we can have right now you yeah. know in a lot of cases mm-hmm. i mean it's still taking some time but i could see even i don't i think the doc- doctors are in a certain union right now and uh there's like a doctor's union, I mean, in Canada that negotiates their salary since they work for the government. And there's a huge bottleneck in doctors. Like we need a lot more doctors. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not enough people to have the training for the amount of people that need the help. Um, so AI companies like um, Scale are working on 
these kind of problems to make, you know, one in 10 or nine out of 10 clinical appointments with an AI doctor. Oh, uh, okay. Just imagine how that's going to fuck up the, yeah. the high income earning potential of being a doctor. Oh yeah. But it, it also makes it like strange too, because it's like, if you think about, because the reason there's such a shortage could arguably be attributed to the policy that Canada has right now when it comes to our it's healthcare. Clo- it's globally. It's a global issue. Oh, it's a global Doc- issue. Yeah, doctors are, are lacking globally. They're lacking. They've been yeah. caught lacking. This is hard. It's a hard gig. It's a hard job. Yeah. It's hard to stay on top of it. So many responsibilities. That's why an AI, you know, a ro- imagine just being like seen by a robot nurse. Even the highest. Scanning you like, you know, that movie, Big Hero 6. No, I haven't seen, haven't that, seen movie. that. No, There's the robot like is like a, is like a nurse yeah, robot. Oh, like can like assess you and check for like psychological, mental mm-hmm. health issues. Can diagnose any sprains or breaks and then send you to you know mm-hmm. give you a referral. And he can also fight bad guys. Also <laughs> fight bad guys. Yep. <laughs> it's Which a good. Mo- it's a good movie actually. Yeah, it's I gotta check movie. it out. I, I'm just like yeah, that is really interesting. What's the first domino that's gonna fall in this chain of? Robot. <laughs> I was take over. Uh, I was, Dude, that transition was ridiculous. <laughs> I was gonna say more specifically. Um, I was like, it's like, is it only doctors going out of sh- um, shortage of jobs? But uh, see, I want to take. Like I want to take storms. I think storms is so good. As a, you know, I'll always take storms instead of mine. Though. Oh no! The next domino really to fall is Domino's pizza delivery. Oh. And you know, this is kind of funny. We were just talking about robots automating jobs that people want. Now we're going to talk about robots automating jobs that people don't want. So Domino is one of those one of those companies that won big in the pandemic because people are at home and they're stressed and they don't know what to do, so they eat pizza, um, which I think is like all of our like you know just, you know s- you know steady state, right? If we don't know what to do, we just eat pizza. Um, do I never? I never know what to do then. <laughs> <laughs> so you know they did really well in the pandemic, and then yeah. what's happened is. Um, they've actually had this like ongoing beef with these like delivery apps and they don't use them. They use pepperoni <laughs> <laughs> beef. Oh my God. Um, no, um, Domino's has a feud. Um, it has kind of a public stance that they don't want to use the Uber eats, the, da- the door dashes, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And they want to use their own delivery guy. They always do that. It's always, if you even, even now in our area, if you order Domino's, you get it, you get it delivered by a Domino's, Domino's pizza, pizza driver. D- yeah. Delivery guy. Um, now the issue is it's super hard to get these drivers and the drivers that are in the economy of driving and delivering, they are rather working on Uber eats or whatever else because they can do multiple jobs at the same time. They're getting their, they're getting their dough elsewhere. Yeah. (laughs) Nice one. (laughs) I'm surprised that wasn't storm or you had that one locked in. No, (laughs) he's smiling though. (laughs) He's proud of you. Um, (laughs) but or they would rather drive people around because transporting people pays a bit more than transporting food. Who would know? So uh, this has been an issue. Their, their shortage is super bad. Um, they're expecting to get more people, you know, you know, calling call centers rather than calling the local shops. Yeah. Um, and, the, you know, there's, there's been experiment. I think Domino's, like, l- last year, maybe we even talked about this. They had, like, a little robot that was delivering pizzas. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. So In, like, big, big, big cities. Big cities, yeah. Yeah, just driving down the sidewalk, keeping it warm, delivering right to your doorstep. I think that's going to have to be the move here. Or even, and dare I say this, Drone delivery. Drone delivery. Yeah, I actually think drone delivery for pizza could be better because mm-hmm. you could have faster. It, it could be faster. Um, well, it, here's the payload's a, not too heavy. I mean, sometimes it is. Well, yeah, well, I'm wondering too. Like, uh, I don't know how to combat this, but how can you like by putting it up in the air too? And like, does that cool it a lot faster? Um, as long as it's it's like it's isolated it's insulated yeah and there's not air running in it's not going to do the like the effect of cold air moving over the warm yeah. molecules and then yeah it's, it's as long as it's isolated it's not gonna make a difference i don't think um the one thing that i'm thinking about though is i think about the energy consumption for a robot to transport on wheels with torque to get over bumps and everything else to your door it has to get all the way back yeah Going back needs a lot of energy too. Or a drone, I think the trip there is going to take a lot of energy to hold this pizza in the air or four pizzas or whatever. But the way back, really breezy. Yeah. Right? Because it doesn't have any payload and it can just fly right back to the base. So it'll have enough sauce to get back. Yeah. <laughs> Secret <laughs> sauce. I think Domino's should do drones. I don't know. Oh, Domino's drone. That's kind of, that's, there's some alliteration there too. Domino's drone. Yeah. Who, who knows? Maybe that's a thing. Maybe we'll look it up and it's like already yeah. exists. Yeah, but that's a bit cheesy. Um, you know, it, I think that would solve their issue. So, you know, good luck to Domino's. What a great franchise. I love Domino's Pizza. I, I'm not like crazy about Domino's Pizza, 
but I love like the company and how like they are just somehow like innovating this. Yeah. Like, like they're what, so ahead of the game when it comes to pizza. Like we really thought that pizza was innovative or like it didn't need innovation. any more innovation, but it's just so wrong. You know what? You know what? I think there's got to be Domino's pizza drones. There has to be. Lewis snuck in a cheesy joke. Oh, nice. Literal, che- like actually cheesy. The joke itself was cheesy, but he also said cheesy as well. He said cheesy too. It was it was it was layered cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Three cheese. <laughs> um, yeah, look at Domino's is reviving its pizza drone delivery plans January twenty seventh, twenty twenty two. Nice. So nice. Dama Drones. It's called, it's called Drones. Sky Drop. It's, so I guess it's a third Sky it's a third Drop. party company that's you know gonna be delivered. So man, this is a real thing. There's actually a video. And I, oh my god, okay, hold on. Let me send you guys this video. This is kind of cool. Or is it warm? I hope it's warm. <laughs> okay, I just sent it to the chat. Lewis is on a roll. I know. <laughs> Pizza roll. Oh my <laughs> god, you guys. <laughs> I had to get a slice of the action too. Oh, oh it all to Lewis. shit! <laughs> shit. Cut shit. it out! <laughs> Cut, Cut it out! out. Oh. Wow, I feel like such a beta now in this room. <laughs> I, have, I have no. Uh, yeah, dad jokes. You, you don't have the sauce. Look at this! It's like, this is like what I'm saying. Look at it's a drone delivering a pizza. This is insane. It took two to three minutes, man. This is faster. Look at the. I mean, look at how big the bullseye is. Oh. Oh, it's not even flying down to drop it off. It's literally just lay, like letting it down by like by a yeah. string. Just drops it right on your doorstep. Yeah, that's actually so cool. Yeah, well, when it when it comes to pizza delivery, it's an absolute crust. Crust. Like instead of must. Oh, I didn't oh. catch that one. No, sorry. sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't catch that one. <laughs> I think you should just toss that one out, Lewis. <laughs> oh, nice. no. Yeah, I got bad, deli- bad delivery, yeah. It was drone delivery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, good news for Europe's iPhone owners. By fall 2024, smartphones um, for smartphones, there will be required to use USB-C charging ports. So no more of Apple's absolutely unnecessary lightning cables. The move could cut out 11K metric tons of e-waste annually. That's huge. And I think that means all of us are getting them. I don't think Apple's going to make a different one for them. No. A different one for us. I'm I think glad. they're going to standardize it. Um, dumbest, dumbest thing Apple's ever done. You know what the thing is hilarious is that the government looked after this problem in the UK. Yeah. I want, it must be great to live there because if they're, like, they're on this problem on the backlog, like, does that mean all the other problems are solved? Like, where does, where does fixing iPhone's annoying cable situation, like, lie in the priority of, like, mm-hmm. EU's, EU's, like, problems to solve? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they must have everything pretty smooth over there. Like, it's probably no poverty, probably great, you know, market system. Yeah, not really. <laughs> no. Terrorism. Yeah? Yeah, ISIS well, then how is they, how pretty do you have bad the time there. For this? Here's, what I, here's my reaction when you first told me the story, mm-hmm. was, um, you, know, this, you know, I could see a group of guys, you know, in a room just pissed off about this. And you know, willing to you know <laughs> you know create an article attacking Apple, the fact that the government was like, "Yo, we're gonna make Apple get rid of those dumb cables." T- to me, is a bit weird. Yeah, I'm glad they did it, but I'm also confused. It is a bit strange. I mean, like wh- when like you basically center everything around tea and biscuits, right? Things just get done better. It yeah. seems you know. Start your day with tea. Yeah, you start your. B- like it's actually funny like you you ever see that clip of boris johnson where he like walks out to the press and asks like comes out with a with a tray of tea and crumpets no yeah he literally said you guys want some tea like he's literally giving tea and crumpets and you crumpets swear there was crumpets too okay i don't know about crumpets I, I felt like you were capping a bit about the crumpets <laughs> he might have been it might have been tea and biscuits but he was giving tea. <laughs> why, would you, why would you lie about the crumpets because it's like like, was it somewhat believable? It was. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why. But he literally was giving out tea. He's like, you want some tea? And, like, people do that in, in, in Europe. And honestly, like, it calms everyone down. It puts everyone on the same level yeah. playing field. Yeah, there's no crumpets in the picture I found. No. You fucking liar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Damn. Well, anyway, oh, looking forward to an iPhone with a USB C. My yeah. charger for my laptop and my charger for my iPad is USB C. So yeah. it's like I have to carry an extra cable. But now, AirPods, those are Lightning. Yeah. 
So now I have one to one cable for my AirPods, and I need three cables. Mm. Good know. thing is too is that you can wirelessly charge those. My AirPods? Yeah. Off the back of my phone, or just on a wireless charger? Oh, just on a wireless charger. So I don't do that. I've never done that. Before. Why? I don't know. Oh. Just never tried it. <laughs> Didn't <laughs> the way, even know that was the way. Thing, the way you said that is like, uh, <laughs> like I don't do that. Like it was like wrong don't, or dirty. Like yeah, like don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Don't, don't, that's what that's what Apple tried saying. Then EU yeah. said no. We're gonna tell you what to do. Did you know that Europe is also the reason why we see the accept all cookies pop up everywhere yeah. too? Yeah, they're super uh, internet privacy stuff. Yeah. Good for Europe. Overrated or underrated? All right. Don't look at them. Don't look I'll at just go through them. Don't okay. Look. Cap. Okay, ready? Yeah, so, so... So here, we'll set some parameters for we, it. Should we, like, do a time for overrated or... Yeah, overrated or underrated. He Let's won. do this. He wanted to do a split with you. He went overrated and you go... Oh, okay. And then you just, like, did it again. Okay, so... Wait. So I just, I was like, overrated or... And you go, underrated. Okay. Right? All right. It's time for overrated or... Underrated. Let's do this. Nice. Let's go. Ju- so, what do you can got we for can us? we say properly rated? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And let's also limit. Uh, you get one sentence to justify your thing. If there's an argument from the other guy, then you can rebuttal his argument. But oh, okay, so it's like political debate level. We'll keep it. Yeah. We'll keep it real tight. Okay. Um, and we'll go back and forth. So we'll start with Lee, and then Lewis can take the next one. Okay. All right, Lee. We work. Um, underrated. Lewis. Overrated. Lee, do you want to say why? Yeah, so I say underrated because um, their opportunity um, with the way that the world's going to work from home and all these offices are closing to create co-working spaces culturally makes more sense and the cost of real estate is going to be better and is also appreciated like a lot. So I think they have a huge opportunity in real estate and a huge opportunity culturally with the shift away from offices. So underrated. Lewis? Overrated. They don't own any of the real estate that they buy. People are okay with working from home, um, and even if they aren't, um, I don't think they'll be able to get all the membership to be the, at the valuation that they're at right now. So my response, sure, <laughs> is um, they do own some of the real estate. Some that some. was also under the scandal of um, the so, CEO. So they own some of the real estate, and the company, as it stands, is still legally publicly uh, uh, is still a legal I think public company. Are they going to realist to be public? And based on their evaluation right now, they're a huge buy. Very, very undervalued. Based on their real estate holdings and also their service opportunities. The brand is tarnished, so I get that. But I think underrated is what I'm saying is that they're already really underrated by the public. So that's why I'm saying I think they're actually so underrated by the public that they're actually um, underrated. Overrated. All right, next one. Flow Carbon, Lewis. Overrated. Lee. Um... I can't, I can't say underrated twice for Adam Newman, but it looking like a stand. So I will say properly rated because I haven't heard any hype about them yet. All I've heard is that they're existing. And it sounds like they have a pretty good mission. So I would say properly rated because I don't know better. Lewis? Just like, it's like a generator, you know, like a, an, a random generator, you know, take, a, take any sort of business model and put on blockchain. And that's what they did. Adam, Adam Newman hit the random button saw carbon neutral tax credits on the blockchain and that's how he started a business. <laughs> nice. Random business generator. <laughs> that's funny, pretty funny. Lee, PlayStation. Um, underrated. Um, un- uh, f- properly rated. Lewis? Properly rated. Lewis, Xbox. Overrated. Lee. I was gonna say overrated too. Why compared to PlayStation? So me like, personally, they just they recently purchased uh, Bethesda Games. Their games are not that good. I think they are extremely overrated. Um, they bought Mojang, um, which is really good. So they have like Minecraft, which is did amazing. they also buy Activision and Blizzard? No. Oh wait, did they? Okay, well they're super overrated too. Yeah. Yeah, but like, what do you mean did they? It was like one of our first stories. Yeah, I know. I just completely forgot. <laughs> Overrated, just like the game, like the, the the acquisitions they've made for the games that they've uh, for for the games, like ex- exclusivity, wasn't that good apart from Minecraft. And I think that PlayStation just has better games. Yeah, I was in a, my my reason for them being overrated is because I think they are they're too heavy on acquisition of game companies, and less about making controllers that don't hurt your hands. 
So they actually have a controller, like an extremely accessibility controller right now. I just g- grew up playing Xbox. My hands used to always hurt. I much preferred the PlayStation controller. Xbox 360 or Xbox like 360. Oh, okay. Because, uh, yeah, those Xbox controllers were horrible, the first ones. They were aesthetically cool, Storm? but they I just I never were, played them, really. They were too bulky for me. It's on PlayStation my whole life. Yeah. yeah. I was on PlayStation as well. PlayStation stands for life. Lee Nintendo. <sighs> Properly rated. Lewis. Properly rated. Yeah. It's tough. They're Underrated. Like, IP, baby. <laughs> I'm going to be like Gary Vee now. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, the thing is, like, that's what people, that's where people see the value already in their IP. It's um, like, it's like Pixar. Like, Nintendo just has such a strong brand. Mm-hmm. So, so family friendly. They've made some really questionable mistakes, but like, they're making I'm a super nostalgic. They're making a theme park. Theme park. Yeah. So, like, just like they're building, it's going to be bigger. Yeah. And, but, but, but I think people know, like, people, no one's, no one's shorthanding. Nintendo, like that's a fucking company. Yeah. I like, feel like they respect that. I feel like uh, the reason I say properly rated is because they've like I feel like they've taken advantage of their brand a little bit being so good by releasing like some really lackluster games, games, yep. systems, etc. But even the Pokemon series specifically, I gotta say this: that system. I mean, those games do really well, but they just like r- making they're so slow to make progress with those games, yeah. and they also make the same game like three times every time. So they'll release like diamond and pearl or sapphire emerald and ruby and the kids will buy all three or mm-hmm. whatever and they're the same game yeah they just like ch- tweak a couple of things yeah so from a business perspective they are killing it because they're making so much money and doing little work even creativity wise like like the like their brand is just so good oh yeah yeah but I, I love they're, they're doing lots of building but no one no one talks shit about nintendo i feel like they're like one of the most loved brands oh absolutely honestly. nintendo fans are crazy but like who, is there nintendo haters um, yeah, there is definitely Nintendo. A lot haters. of people think that uh, like there's a lot of memes about PlayStation, Xbox being gamers, and then Nintendo being like, like children, stupid people. <laughs> really? Stupid like you're not people? a like yeah. you're not a gamer. Lewis, mug root beer. Mug root beer underrated. Lee, overrated. I, I prefer A and W root beer. Bruh, what? Yeah. You don't like the old fashioned American value mug root beer? No, I also don't like the. It's called mug root beer. It's mug because he's got a big manly mug on there. Yeah, but what if I drink it out of a glass? Now, now I feel weird. I'm pouring mug root beer in a glass. I feel like it's making it's like demasculating. That's me. that's what a sissy does. You know what? You how do you become emasculated when you drink mug? You freaking. <laughs> you feel like a man when you drink mug. You drink mug root beer. You become an old fashioned American man. I mean, do I look like an old fashioned American man to you? <laughs> Because you drink barks. <laughs> A&W root beer. Or oh, sorry, you drink A&W root beer. That yeah. ain't American. It's, it's Canadian. Kind of. It's not. I, I don't know, <laughs> don't actually. So. No, so it is not. Underrated. Overrated. Lee, Domino's, the company. Um, underrated. Properly rated. They're underrated because they get considered like they, they get looked at like fast food pizza because they are, but they're really just doing pizza really fast and efficiently. And I would argue, and I'm gonna get hated for saying this, but Domino's pizza is legit better than some mom and pops. I would agree with that. Yeah. I think like that's just why it's properly rated because they are the dominator in their era. I would say I would say like Little Caesars is underrated because they <laughs> Bro, get out. <laughs> what? Little Caesars Lil again. C- you're gonna do this Little Caesars thing again? No, <laughs> Louis is again because you used to work at Little Caesars. No, and now you love the company. And I don't love the company. Talk about them all the time. No, what I'm saying. <laughs> Every time Domino's comes up, you're like, don't get your knickers Caesars. in a knot. <laughs> what I'm saying is that people hate on Little Caesars. They literally call it cardboard because it tastes like cardboard. And sometimes there's a there's a vibe <laughs> where you want to eat that shit. But it is not good pizza. Domino's is great pizza. Domino's is not great pizza. It's oh, it's like on the same vibe as it's Little not. Caesars. There's there that's a that's a pizza tier list. They are literally like three levels apart. How are they three levels apart? Little three Caesars levels? is an F, and Domino's is a B. Are you fucking shitting me? Domino's is a D. Okay, we, we can move on from this, yep. but underrated. Yeah, properly rated. Before overrated. <laughs> fight. <laughs> Lewis, uh, the UK Charger Change 2024. Underrated. 
Um, I would say overrated. I think it was already going to happen, and I think they just wasted a lot of taxpayer dollars to make it happen, and it's not going to change anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, Web5. Um, overrated. Overrated. Lewis, Spotify music slash podcasts. Together at Spotify. Properly rated. Underrated. I think if you if you sell audiobooks or you write audiobooks or you benefit in any way from audiobooks in a monetary sense, you should watch out. Cool. And think about how you're going to make money when the value of books decreases. Lee, Apple Music slash podcasts. Properly rated, it's shit. And people know it's shit. Yeah. Sam. Actually, uh, hold on. But... If you're listening to us on Apple, please give us a review, five stars. <laughs> and uh, don't forget, to, uh, you know, we don't want we don't want the Apple gods to shut our podcast. But yeah, it's not a good platform, unfortunately. No, I have it as part of my Apple One subscription, and I don't use it at all. No, nope, me neither. And my kids fuck up my Spotify, and they listen to shit on there. You yeah. pay for Spotify, and you but you already have Apple Music. Yes, me too. Oh wow, yep. Yep. Cause because it's part of, like because it's part of the Apple One. It gets better to just buy that because then you get TV and everything than doing it all individually. Yeah. So like, yeah, I got Apple Music so and I got to say that I have Apple Music and Spotify. I have Apple One literally because they threw it in the bundle. Or yep. sorry, I have Apple Music because it's part of the bundle. Yep. It's a good value bundle, Storm. Apple yep. One. Yubo. I don't know enough about Yubo. What do you think, Lewis? Um, from the from the synopsis of what it's going to be, their NFTs, how oh, they're doing underrated it different. Underrated because I think any social media platform that... It's got 60 million users growing with a young audience um, you need to watch out for. But also, if their mission is not just social networking, but making friends, I think that's really interesting because I think people yeah. are more and more lonely. Isolated. Yeah. Properly rated for me, I guess. I'm not too sure about it. Properly rated. Lee, T-Pain. Underrated. Underrated. Hell yeah, boys. <laughs> uh, Lewis, uh, Robot Workers. properly rated because i think it's pretty obvious like why people do it from morally standing it's it's interesting in our current society because it's a bit polarizing it's a bit scary um but I, it, not 100 percent a bad thing so properly rated i would say underrated because people don't realize how much we actually need them they're not just simply here to innovate and make our lives better and do the jobs that we don't want to do we need robot workers to do the jobs that we can't do, the ones that we'll need to feed our families. So I would say robot workers are very underrated. And the fact that we are four times lower than South Korea in North America, or USA is four times lower than South Korea in regards to automating jobs, robot workers, that to me is a bad number. And I think they'll probably make a ton of money, um, companies that are doing it in the States over the next 10 years. Next. Lee, robot lovers. Underrated. Um, I had an AI girlfriend and pretty dope. Uh, overrated. I think that they are, they're underrated because, um, until you experience it, you don't really realize how much intimacy and connection you can feel. And I think right now a robot girlfriend, if you asked a hundred guys what they thought about an, a robot girlfriend or an AI girlfriend, 90 plus of them would tell you that that's lame. And I think in 50 years, 20 of them will have sentient AI partners. So Yeah, I just like having a girlfriend. Me too. You know, It's a luxury of having a human girlfriend. But I'm just saying, AI girlfriends, there's a place Overrated. for them. You know what they say, like you said earlier, alpha males, they're out here you know, connecting with 80% of the women, 20% of the guys. So there's a lot of guys that are disenfranchised, man. They're out that might, that, but that, that statistic might not even be real. But an alpha male said it on a YouTube course. Oh, true. Shit, that is real then, yeah. But how about in countries like Japan, China, where a lot of young men are just like mm. not socializing, not connecting with women, no, not finding I, partners. I, I mean, this is a that. real issue. It is definitely an issue. So. I, I don't know if robot AI is the goal. Is the, it's not the solution. The solution, yeah. Right? But it might be a treatment for the symptom of heartache. And loneliness. Lewis. Damn, that needs to be a song. <laughs> cure <laughs> uh, cure to heartache. <laughs> a treatment for the symptom of heartache <laughs> and loneliness. <laughs> it's a BTS song. <laughs> Army. <laughs> <laughs>
Lewis, BTS. Underrated. BTS is underrated. Overrated because they have the cult following and they're just obsessed with the, them for being BTS. I don't think it's for the music anymore. It is for the music. The music's not that good. How do you know? I've listened to their biggest songs. And what's their What's their biggest song? I don't know. And, that's, oh, exactly. and that, should tell you, that should tell you how not impressive it is because I've heard them on the radio, on Spotify. I check them out. Yeah. I just but don't you don't know, know their songs. They're not memorable. They are memorable. There was a new one that just came out. I saw on YouTube trending and I watched it with my son and I, that was about a week ago and I don't remember it. It was Bobby Schmerda? No. About a week ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah, it was about a week ago, but it was a BTS song. Yeah. Um, and I just didn't didn't remember, like it. So sorry, Army. Not a fan. Lewis, Lewis does fan. index finger. Lee does middle finger heart with it. Uh, yeah. That's how you know you're not a fan. <laughs> yeah. That's how you know you're not a fan. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think it's Lee next. Lambda. Uh, Google Lambda. Um. Uh, overrated. I think that guy's tripping. You know, I'm saying properly rated. Man's like success. Like Lambda successfully gaslit its first victim. <laughs> it was one of her own developers. Yeah, and that's like that's pretty impressive. Actually, yo, have you ever seen Ex Machina? Yeah, dude, that's literally what happened. Yeah, Ex Machina literally finesses the guy. Yeah. Freaking, Spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Literally, in the end of the movie, man's like. No, we should have said spoiler alert before we said that. Because it's a really yeah. good movie, and the ending is really fucking... It is chilling. The ending is chilling. Oh, it's trap. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's that's what happened right there. Well, if that's what happened, then that means it really is conscious. Then. That's, yeah, well, that... Because that, that robot misled the... Spoiler, by the way. That robot misled the audience. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, misled the guy. Well, and the audience. And the audience. Because, us, too. Because we I, thought that that robot was, like, needed help. To escape, and yeah. then that robot just fucking slayed everybody. Yeah. All right, wouldn't be overrated or underrated without it. Our, our first overrated, underrated without Gary V. Gary V. Overrated. Oh, underrated. Gary V. Gary v. Yeah. v. Overrated or underrated? Go ahead. Properly rated. I think like. Oh, sorry. I don't know what you say. You go ahead. No, like you oh, yeah. say you're. Okay. <sighs> overrated. Yeah. Ooh. I'm gonna say properly rated. <laughs> Because I think personally, he's become a meme, and like a lot of the things he says, like it, it's being said as jokes. But I think if you look at the surface level, I think he's improved lots of people's lives. I think he's thought, made a lot of people think uh, entrepreneurially, um, and I think that has some impact. So I'm gonna go say properly rated. I say overrated, and I love Gary Vee, and I love what he does. I think he's such a great human and does great things. But I also think he's. Like, I just don't, and you know what? He could prove me wrong. I just, the way his brand works and his core audience, I see him peaking right now. I see mm. this being his, like, this crypto thing. And because he used to be, you know, listen, Gary Vee got onto a private jet with my background in music, of me rapping, many Wait, years what? ago. Yeah, there's a video, one of his old vlogs. He's, like, going on to the private jet, and one of my old rap songs is the song. No way. From the ground up. I did it with the intent of building my town up. Dude, that's epic. Yeah, he's getting on the getting on the plane, um, way back in the day. So you know, obviously, I've been a big a big Gary Vee fan for a long time. Yeah. But right now, people love him so much. I saw that stuff from VCon, and I was like, holy shit! And the market obviously is not doing too well. VCon, man, the fact that like it's called VCon should be say yeah. something. Yeah. So, so I think right now, even though he's so great, I think he's a bit overrated right now. Um, and I think I think his value that he brings to people, I think, hasn't changed really in the last couple of years. I think the people he was serving a couple of years ago, creating content f to business owners, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, and marketers, has changed a lot to like investors and hobbyists and things like that. But the value he's brought them, I mean, people like Storm, he's obviously helped out a lot. It could be a bit different though, because you are right. I mean, there's he can't keep going to garage sales forever, so he has to transition to crypto. So. No, I get that. I just don't know. I, so here's what I'm saying. I don't know what the next step is that's better than this one. Uh, I think he steps down from here. Could gotcha. be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I just don't know what it is. I can't yeah. picture it. Fair. And um, I like that. I know he's gonna. I, I know he. If he ever heard this, he won't. But he would want. He would totally prove this wrong. He would say, yeah. "No, I'm gonna turn his like V friends into like the next Disney." And shit. Yeah. He yeah. is saying that. Yeah. He's saying that, and I and I want that to be true. I just don't know if that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Can you like just curious curiosity because I don't know, but like because he's pretty eccentric and he's like definitely not like like family friendly. 
So, like, do you think he could turn V Friends into a Disney thing? No. Well, no. That's why. That's why. I don't think so. I don't think you can just do it. Yeah. Disney was organic. They created one by one. A lot of hardworking people put real magic into stories. And over like a hundred years or something fucked. I don't know how long it's been. (laughs) But even Pixar too. I like how you said the magic thing, then you said the fuck thing. (laughs) (laughs) They built this It was like he was a Disney spokesperson. The (laughs) magic in it. And then he's like, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) But But Disney might have been racist. If maybe there's for a lot sure. of, there's a lot of things about his old yeah. early works. Yeah, for so. sure, they also sure. hated Jews. For sure, for sure that like, I mean, if you go hated. back in time, there's a lot of weird things. But the point is the stories and the magic in those stories and how powerful they but are. They bought them. A lot. Yeah, of them. but the stories were valuable. Gary built them. Yeah. He literally just made them all immediately, and he so he built. It was like a bit of the cart before the horse thing, where Disney found things that people love, like Marvel, Star Wars, even recently, right? And he they bought those things, but Marvel came from. These guys writing comic books for a super long time, yeah. countless stories. Same thing with Star Wars. That's a you know that has a cult fan base that they purchased. So all those organically built, and Disney, you know, built this machine that owns all of it. Where Gary Vee just created a bunch of IP from scratch. Yeah, literally scribbled them, dude. Scribbled yeah. them, which is like fine, but it's just like it, since it's behind his like brand which is a little bit like not family friendly it's also flimsy like gary v is not a strong brand like mm-hmm. gary v could be gone in five years yeah do you know what i mean where yeah. no he could be there, <laughs> i know, I know he, he probably won't be but i'm just saying there's a reality where in five years he's not as big as he is now yeah. where disney is like star wars might fall off. star wars won't fall off that's no. built that's so long yeah. but like i don't know maybe the marvel movies will lose some interest no, right? I wouldn't say maybe, so. Do you know that Sony had, Sony had the opportunity to buy all of the Avengers for $25 million, but they said no and took just Spider-Man for $10 million That's crazy. In the late 80s. So even from then, f- to them to blow up, compared to when Stan Lee was writing all these, takes some time. Takes time? Yes. There's so much time. <laughs> Patience? It's only been one year But for V Friends. No, I know. No, Marvel's oh, been around for... Yes, but... Okay. C- like... The thing is, like, do people care about the V Friends though? The way they care about so, been maybe no Disney one cared about Marvel then. No, that's, that's no, why. No, no. That's hold on, hold on. I that's I why the movies nobody wanted them. Though. I grew up playing Iron Man. Yeah, the, but the you nostalgia grew up was baked in. Yeah, they just undervalued it because there wasn't enough. So when the first Iron Man movies came out, they did. They were lame as hell. The first Iron Man. Not like Robert Downey Jr. Like oh my god, like oh. the first Iron Man. This movies. is my first time seeing V Friends. Oh, like the <laughs> you've never looked. Oh, so them. you didn't. When I said they, he literally scribbled them. You didn't know what I was talking about. I, I was series yeah. two though. They updated all of them to look make them nice. Yeah, I saw it. I like, saw that. But I just here's what I'm saying though. Storm is like those things. That, so it, over the last like let's just say 50 years, there have been tons and tons of stories. Disney owns the biggest ones, the biggest IPs, the biggest stories that we tell our kids the, that books are built off, the fucking theme parks are built around. Gary Vee just fucking scribbled a bunch of characters down. He's like, I'm going to invent stories. So if he ever falls, which is possible, I know, he, I know you don't think so, but <laughs> he could fall, then all of the IP falls. Where Disney, like, has, they're, they're so diversified. They've got, like, any one of those things could fall, and they're still, st- they're still solid. That's the difference. Where all of Gary Vee's IP is also behind him. So I'm like... We're comparing the fact that he's even in the conversation with Disney. Is well, that's because he put himself in the conversation. Yeah. Well, saying. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what Kanye did, though, and look. That's true. That's with true. everything, his but entire but, career. But, but you know what, though, if if anyone said to me, me and Bill Gates about, about now, now you're comparing me and Bill Gates. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I just put that out there. Well, the Kanye in the fashion thing, for example. Yeah. Like the, the the argument I'm making now for Disney, it doesn't stand with the fashion thing. There's no reason why he couldn't have participated. It was just an elitist thing. He's a creative person. He didn't have maybe the design, sk- hard design skills, but he could creative direct other designers. That was that was silly. Um, why people didn't let him in there? But Gary Vee and Disney, come on. I mean, come on. He'll never be right? Disney. So you think he's overrated? Huh? You I think, think he's overrated. I think right now he's overrated because of the cult following, because of the obsession, because of the peak of the crypto yeah. stuff. Um, it hasn't gone mainstream yet. It's still like very much you know a unique audience that's obsessed with it. I think. Gary V potentially could be at his peak, but cool. he also couldn't be. We ripped this whole segment from him for content for our fans, and you're gonna do that to him. Man. I know, I know. That's <laughs> again, I love, I love Gary V. Respect. You know, you're an inspiration, but right now. So this was faster forward, which I believe 
was longer than the, than the, <laughs> the, was it than the main podcast today. Yeah. Oh my god, it actually was pretty long. I didn't even realize that. But we uh, we did not move faster. <laughs> <laughs> it actually isn't longer yet, but it's getting close. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much for listening to Faster Forward this week, guys. Um, we're looking forward to talking next week. Um, so make sure you subscribe on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure you follow us on TikTok, YouTube, and uh, where's the last Instagram, yep. where we'll be posting reels of this. And yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Um, who do you guys think is overrated or underrated? Let us know in the comments in our shorts or in the YouTube video below. Let us know Lee overrated, underrated, and Lewis overrated, underrated, and Storm <laughs> overrated, well, underrated. Yeah, absolutely. Eve's Cone's going to be the one commenting. Yeah. <laughs> curious what he's going to say. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great day. Peace.